Hello, I'm Anthony. Welcome back to the Essential Guide to Latency in Cubase. In this episode, we're going to be dealing with a subject called ASIO Guard. This is one of Cubase's best offerings for how to mitigate the problems of latency that we saw in the last episode. If you're enjoying this series and you want to help support me, check out the Patreon and YouTube channel member links below. Awesome way to do that. Let's have a look at the audio meter. This project is currently really struggling. In fact, even at rest, you can see the PC simply cannot handle what I'm asking it to do. That's because I've got the buffer size set really low. At the moment, we've got a buffer size, 32 samples, and with this fully laden project that I've got loaded in the background, the computer can't handle it. That's because it's having to process all of the tracks of this song in real time, and it can't do it, there's just too much. But watch what happens when we engage ASIO Guard. It's in the audio system page, it's here. Activate ASIO Guard, and I'm gonna turn it on. You get an audio dropout, and then when the system comes back, it's far more well behaved. In fact, you can see that it's not getting anywhere near peaking. It doesn't matter whether or not the song is stopped or playing. Let's hear the song. So this is a fully laden song with all sorts of effects on various channels. And you can see all of these plugins. All of that was previously being processed in real time before I engaged ASIO Guard. All of those plugins, all of these tracks, everything that was being required in order to um, reproduce the sound in this project was happening in real time through that tiny 32 sample buffer. And it was way too much, the, the computer simply couldn't handle it. When I engaged ASIO Guard, a secondary buffer, an absolutely huge buffer as it happens, was activated and every non-record enabled or monitored track was routed through it. Now as things stand at the moment, every one of these tracks is disabled for recording and monitoring. In other words, the entire project is going through the ASIO Guard buffer. Let's have a look at it. See the ASIO Guard latency with this massive number, 92.88 milliseconds. That gives you some indication of how big the ASIO Guard buffer is. It's a second completely dedicated buffer for all non-live tracks. What that means is that the CPU isn't having to do any of that work in real time. It basically, it's got all of this information. It knows exactly what all of these audio tracks looks like. If we're not recording or listening to the track in real time, it doesn't need to be live. And so the computer has an opportunity to basically look ahead in time and say, well, when you press play, I know what I'm going to have to do for the next few milliseconds. I'm going to work that out ahead of time to give myself basically some chance to, to, to keep up. I'm going to do all of that work ahead of time and have all of this data in a, in a secondary buffer waiting to go, basically waiting to send to the audio interface. Any extra stuff that needs to be done on the live tracks, I'll worry about that at the time and I'll mix these two things together before finally going to the audio interface. So it reduces an enormous burden on the computer. You need to not panic about how big that number is because to all intents and purposes, you're never going to experience it. Let's do a little bit of testing and see ASIO Guard in operation before we go any further into having a look at the size of this number. Going to have a look at a couple of these Groove Agent tracks. Check out the ASIO Guard and Real Time bars. The ASIO Guard is just past a quarter and the Real Time's kind of hovering around about an eighth. That's with no tracks record enabled, so everything is basically going through the ASIO Guard buffer at the moment, being pre processed, tons of headroom, all of that information is being collated and presented ready for merging with the live stream in order to be passed on to the audio interface. If I record enable the two Groove Agent tracks, the ASIO Guard's going to go down and the real-time demand is going to go up. Really easy, you know, very, very stark dis difference now. The ASIO Guard's well below a quarter and the real-time's basically doubled. Just by activating two Groove Agent tracks, we've basically doubled the real-time demand on the computer because in addition to simply managing the DAW itself, you know, there is CPU work in just delivering this stuff to the audio interface. Calculating audio coming out of VST plugins in real time is particularly difficult. 
and that's where all of this extra burden has come from. Now there are options in the studio setup to change the size of this ASIO guard buffer. If I set it to low instead, we're kind of getting the worst of all worlds. So my recommendation coming out of this episode is that you always have your ASIO guard level set to high and I'm going to try to explain why. But this is one of the reasons. By reducing this buffer, we're simply making it less functional. Now, under normal circumstances, when you're dealing with typical record-enabled or monitor-enabled tracks, there's absolutely no reason to do this. You would have high set 100% of the time. There's only one situation in which you would ever think about coming away from the high buffer, and it's when you're writing automation on a non-record-enabled track. Now this is pretty fine. To be absolutely honest with you, I am a bear of very simple brain. If I'm writing automation, I'm doing it on a record enabled track. I basically select the track, Cubase automatically record enables it for me and just does that implicitly. That's one of the processes. You know, if you select a track, it record enables it, you can see it. That's how I record automation. So the ASIO guard buffer never becomes an issue for me and I can leave it set high. 100% of the time. But of course you can manually override that behavior. You can explicitly write enable automation on a non-record or monitored track. And that's what I've done here. This um, GA Acoustic FX track is now enabled for automation, but it's not record enabled and it's not being monitored. As things stand, the GA Acoustic track is going through the ASIO guard buffer. The GA beat track is going through the standard audio interface buffer because it's record enabled. We saw earlier that if we have the guard level set to high, it's a very high latency. Now, when I say very high, I'm talking less than a tenth of a second. Imagine if you're listening to a streaming service, you're listening to music on Spotify and you press play. It's entirely reasonable for you to wait maybe a second before that audio starts to play. Do you care? No, not really. How about the writing of automation? When you're moving that slider, does a tenth of a second really matter? Well, it might to you. And that's the one situation in which you might choose not to have the ASIO guard level set to high. It doesn't to me. This isn't a, a use case that I'm ever going to encounter because I only do automation on my record selected tracks. But if that's not the case for you and you use this situation where you're writing automation on other tracks, not record enabled, then you need to be aware that the faders that you move, the knobs that you turn, the mute button that you press on and off, all of that is going to be subjected to the ASIO guard buffer latency. And that's it. That's the one situation in which this buffer is ever going to impact you. There's one final feature I'll bring to your attention and it's in the plugin manager. Every single plugin has a stated latency. There you can see that this particular Archuria plugin has a latency of 44 milliseconds. Every single effect and instrument on the system can be enabled or disabled for ASIO Guard. Now by default, everything's enabled. So all of the plugins that you have in your system, if they can be sent through ASIO Guard, in other words, the track's not being record enabled or monitored, it's going to go through the ASIO Guard, it's gonna be sent through that buffer. If for whatever reason you want to single out a plugin to say, never send this plugin through ASIO Guard, process it 100% real time, 100% of the time, then you can disable the ASIO Guard for that plugin. I don't, I never have. I can't envisage a situation in which I ever will, but if you want to, it's there. And so the brief summary is, turn ASIO Guard on, set it to high, Set your buffer as low as your system can reasonably handle it. But with ASIO guard set to high, I just don't hit dropouts. I never hit that performance bar. I never lose audio. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the like button. I'll see you for the next one.